and I'm going to guide you through a one minute breathing relaxation. First breath in. Feel your lungs fully and hold it. And out. Push it all out. And in. Deep, deep breath. Feel your lungs fully and hold it. And out. Let it all out. And in again. Let it feel your lungs fully and hold it. And out. And our candle is lit. This is the start of collective worship. What did Jesus say? That's right. I am the light of the world. Good morning, everyone. So this week in collective worship, we're learning about harvest. And we've learned what harvest means for farmers. And there are farmers all over the world. So the food that ends up on our tables could very well have travelled many, many miles. But just how many miles? A far away planet similar to Earth, but ruined by bad environmental choices. A spaceship with two aliens and a shipboard computer visit Earth and discover from TV signals that we are making similar mistakes. As the computer collects the data, Rob and Andy's mission is to discover firsthand how to care for the environment. Environment fact finding makes you hungry. What are you eating now? Sugar yummy saurus. Says here, a synthetic flavoured cake substitute in the shape of a dinosaur. Tastes disgusting. I wonder what the food mileage is in those. Food miles? What's that? Yeah, that's the distance that food travels from being produced or picked until it gets into your mouth. Generally, the more food miles, the more the environment suffers because that uses transport and that uses engines which give out poisonous fumes. You could say that this yummy saurus has got about 6.1 trillion food miles added to it. I wonder if they're doing the same thing down on planet Earth. That's a street market in London. We'll find out where the Earth people get their food from there. Greetings, Earth people. Can you help us with a project? Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to go around your market here and find four foods from different parts of your planet. OK, but why do you need us? Look, we ruined our planet because we didn't look after it, and we're really worried that you could be making the same mistakes. If we could convince you to look after the environment, then the Earth has got a chance. We'll need some money, though. No problem. Is uh, five gymboids enough? OK, I'll pay. With the computer here, while you've been collecting food, Rob, Andy and I have been researching food miles. Let's see what we've learnt. Well, we have a pineapple here, from Ghana, in Africa. I calculate that pineapple has flown 3,700 food miles to be here. Well, what's wrong with it coming from Ghana? The lad paid good money for it, didn't he? That's not the point. That is... Air freight has huge carbon dioxide emissions and also nitrogen oxide, adding to global warming, not good. And there's been a massive increase in air travel recently. So is that why we say something with high food miles for such a large carbon footprint? So what about this can of tuna then? It's from Thailand. 
Thailand is the biggest producer of tinned tuna in the world. That tin has come 5,900 food miles, but the tins would almost certainly be shipped by sea because tinned foods last much longer, so it doesn't need to get anywhere quickly. The tins are heavy too, so they'd be too expensive to send by plane. But this bread is from Hackney, it's just down the road. Yes, just three food miles. But for anything made, you also have to think of where all the ingredients came from. It may have been baked locally, but the flour may have come all the way from, say, Canada. Look, my mum grows tomatoes in her allotment, but these tomatoes have been flown in from Spain. People now expect to have what was once seasonal foods all year round. You used to only be able to get strawberries, for example, in the summer, but now you can get them at any time. My stepmom says it's important to buy from local growers and food manufacturers. So I guess it's really bad for these tomatoes to be flown in from Spain. We should all get them from Alice's mum. May I mention something? First, nobody's mum would be able to produce enough tomatoes for all the customers. And secondly, there was a study in Sweden. In summer, it was found to be fine to eat locally grown tomatoes, but in winter, they found lots of separate growers using heaters in their greenhouses and everyone individually driving to market using lots of fuel. They found it was more efficient to grow lots and lots of them together in Spain and then fly them in bulk by air. Some say that flying in food is always unnecessary and destructive, but if the UK stops importing from other countries, money will be cut off to many people who rely on other countries to buy their goods. However, some other people say that eventually global warming problems contributed to by high food miles could affect people in hotter countries even more because water will become scarce and soil prone to erosion. It's a complicated problem for us all to understand, but once we get our heads around it, we can all care for our environments. Anybody want one of my half-eaten yummy sugar sauruses? There sure is a lot to think about. Check out the food packaging when you go home. Lots of food packaging now tells you the location of where the food came from. Like these pears which have come all the way from Portugal. All these beans which have come all the way from Kenya. And these grapes, which were grown in Egypt. And when you're looking at those food packaging, get a map and see how far away those countries are from our country, the United Kingdom. So food miles is the distance that food is transported from producers to consumers and consumers are those who buy and eat it. Modern transport enables us to enjoy a world of food on our doorstep. The downside of this, however, is that much fuel is burned by the food industry at a cost both to consumers and to the environment. Also, those who are food producers don't always receive fair prices from customers on the other side of the world. And that, children, is called fair trade. And that's something that we will discuss in collective worship coming up soon too. In the Bible, the people of the Old Testament were warned not to take for granted the ability of the earth to grow food. There's always the danger that with plentiful food supplies, we don't stop to think how much we depend on others. It's time for a prayer. And if you'd like this prayer to be your prayer, it's Amen at the end. You're welcome to look at the candle flame or you can put your hands and your eyes together. Creator God, thank you for food from around the world and for the different tastes that we enjoy. Help us to use the resources of the earth wisely and well to bring the benefit of all people. Amen. Now, before we finish our collective worship together, children, we're going to have the Lord of the Harvest song, the new version that I introduced you to yesterday together. And the words will appear on the screen. I know it's only the second time you've heard it, but please try and follow the words because this is the version of the Lord of the Harvest song that we'll sing together in church during our Harvest Festival. All being well.
Be kind, look after yourselves, and I'll see you around school.